Okay, turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 13. 2 Kings 13 and verse 14. If you don't have your Bible, then it'll be on the screen. 2 Kings 13 and 14. We're going to read through verse 20. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word tonight. We thank you that you speak to us and speak through us. Holy Spirit, have your way. We yield to you. We acknowledge you. We reverence you in all that we do. Lord, be glorified in what we do and what we say. Let us not just be hearers of the word tonight, but let us be doers. Quicken us according to your word. Bring us alive. Bring us into your purpose, Lord God. And we thank you for the outcome that the word will take root, the word will produce fruit, that fruit would increase and remain. We give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. And everyone in agreement said amen. Amen. Second Kings chapter 13, verse 14 through verse 20 says, Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness whereof he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, O oh my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, Open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot. And he shot. And he said, The arrows of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria, for thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek till thou hast consumed them. Verse 18. And he said, take the arrows, and he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, smite upon the ground, or hit the ground, and he smote thrice, or three times, and stayed, or stopped. And the man of God was wroth, upset, angry with him, and said, end of the year. Thank God for the reading of his word. We're still in our discussion about due diligence. Due diligence, due diligence, due diligence. Tell your neighbor, say due diligence. Now, I know when you probably see that term, and normally see it as D-U-E, due diligence, right? And that's just a process that what you do, you're being diligent about what you're doing. You're going through your steps. But this due diligence in this title is for you to be able to know that something is required for you to do. Something is required for the saints to do. God is expect. We serve a due God. For God so loved the world, he gave. Hebrews 11, remember, every act of faith, every person mentioned there had a corresponding action with their faith, with their name being there. They had a corresponding action. And so we continue our conversation tonight here in 2 Kings. I think this is a a profound uh, piece of scripture that we just read here in chapter 13. And it's dealing with the king where the, the Elisha is sick and about to die. And the prophet Elisha, this is, the, this is Elisha who served Elijah. And we've covered that, amen? So Elisha is about to die, and he's given the instructions for the king who's in place for them to have the victory. God's people, for them to have the victory, he's dealing with the leader. Let's look at this. He says in verse 14, Elijah's fallen sick. Joash, the king of Israel, verse 15, he says, And Elisha said unto him, take the bow and arrow. So he gave him an instruction. Don't miss that. Elisha gave instruction that required action. Now, I know we love to put it on God, and that's a part of us, what we're breaking up here. God is God. God is eternal. God is almighty. God is omniscient. God is all of that. But God put us here to have dominion and authority here in the land. That was his original purpose for us. His for Adam, for those the descendants, everything that came out of Adam to have dominion and authority and represent him here in the earth, okay? So that's why Jesus then came to restore, to redeem, to reconcile, to bring it back, to return that authority back to us. And he went and sat down and said, God, I did it. I put everything back in order. Now all they have to do is believe in me. And if you believe in me, then in my name shall you do greater. In my name shall you cast out. In my name shall you tread on scorpions and serpents. In my name shall you cast out demons. In my name shall you lay hands on the sick. He he, he gave us authority. He gave it back to us, but we have to believe in him, right? So here's the kicker. Verse 16, 
He says, take bow and arrows, and he took up bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, now put your hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. The prophet, the word of God, the prophecy was for the king to do something. It was not for Elisha to take the bow and arrow and say, by this time tomorrow, hold on, let me get that bow and arrow. Let me prophesy over you. I'm for blessing houses. I'm for, I'm for that. I'm all for that. You get a house, let's come by, let's anoint it. But you have authority in that house. And if you let demons and demonic activity take place, and I don't care how much oil pass the pour on it, pour down your driveway. What you permit will be permitted. What you put your hand to will be backed up by God. What you don't put your hand to will not be backed up by God. Don't miss that. You see that? That's plain in the text now. Take the bow and arrow. He took it. Pick it up. He picked it up. He put his hands on it. And then Elisha put his hands on top of the king's hands. Ooh, that's so good right there. Elisha said, when you grab it, I'll grab it. God is going to strengthen you and what you put your hands to. Come on, we're coming out of cloud nine. We're come, we coming out. We're coming down. Because, see, your faith should be practical. See, we make our faith spooky. That's why the world doesn't even want to follow because we, we woo. And there's a time for your private place. When he's come out, he said, I don't even be speaking tongues in certain places. The saints are supposed to have discretion. There's a time for it, but you will know. You ain't got to conjure it up, and God will take over, and the power of God will be present, and the answers will be there, and you ain't got to worry about your reputation or what they think of you or how you look when the Holy Ghost begins to move. He will answer all the critics. He will show himself strong. But if you just go around being spooky and, and carrying your Bible everywhere and, and no discretion, don't go to the movies praying. The movie's already made. <laughs> if it ain't for you, get up, walk out. Don't be in there, Shonda Labo. This ain't Shonda Labo. The saints don't have discretion. That was for somebody. I wasn't even thinking about nobody. God, hold on. It was the will of God. For the people of God to prosper. It was the will of God for the people of God to have it. The prophecy came through the prophet to do such and such. But is it possible for it to be the will of God? If for God to release a word for that thing to happen and it's still not come to pass, that's not on God. That's not on the word. That's not on the prophecy. It's what we put our hands to, saints. Faith should require that you put your hands to it. Let's look further. Verse 17. And he said, open the window. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot. The arrows of the Lord's deliverance and the arrows of deliverance for Syria, that you shall smite the Syrians in Aphek till you have consumed them. Then, watch this, he shift gears on him. So he told him to put his hands on the bow and arrow. Okay, now shoot. He shot one out the window eastward. Okay, good. Now he's following instructions. Now we have momentum. Now the prophet, the man of God, told him, he says, now take the arrows in verse 18. He says, and beat the ground with them. And the man of God, the king began to beat the ground with the arrows, but he only did it three times. Ooh, this is good right here. He went, one, two, three. One, two, three. We don't have because we don't continue to hit it. There are things, you had more guts. You had more get up about you when you was in the world. We got saved and got soft. We just pansies and 
fairies and no, no, no. This ain't a sprinkle dust. No. Put your hand to the plow. That's what it says in Luke. Any man who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom. What if you don't have it because you hadn't put your hand to it in faith for that thing to be produced for God to now back up what he said to you? It's going to require you to put your hands to it. You're not going to get it shaped sitting at home. <laughs> You're going to have to go put your hands to that membership. You're going to have to go put your, and you're going to have to take your hands off some stuff too. Here's, here's, here's my question. Here's my question. Do you have the victory yet? Do you have what God promised you yet? Don't answer me. And if you don't have it, why'd you stop? Why'd you stop hitting the pavement? Why'd you stop hitting the ground? Why did you stop being? You, your money ain't right yet? Why, why, you, why you got all this time? How you sleep and crying broke? They don't go together. You get the same 24 hours as Warren Buffett. You get the same 24 hours as Elon Musk. You get the same 24 hours. They don't get extra time. Come on, remember your days? Remember your club days? Come on, remember you had your Thursday night? Come on, I'm telling on some of you. Go out, stay out all night, pop right up in the morning. Go to work like it wasn't you. If somebody did bring a picture, that wasn't me. I was, I, was re- I was home. That wasn't me. Functioning on two, three hours of sleep. Right? There was a time when your priorities were out of order, but you were persistent. There was a time that you worked overtime to produce certain stuff that did not benefit the kingdom. Paul says that we say when you walk as them, you were such with some of you. You used to walk like that. Now you done got in the kingdom and got lazy? Why don't you have it? Why didn't you finish? Why is your marriage not what it's supposed to be? One, two, three. We get weary. You ever got weary? You got weary, it's okay, weary happens. The question is, why are you weary? Because usually our weariness comes from us being out of order. Some of our weariness comes from us being fatigued from focusing on stuff that don't have nothing to do with us. Some of us are fatigued and weary and not able to focus, not able to operate in our faith because we got our hearts and our minds and our focus on other stuff that don't have nothing to do with us that we couldn't change if we had it in our hands and had all the money to fix it. We couldn't change it. Usually it's somebody else's mind, somebody else's heart, somebody else's decision, somebody near and dear to us who we love, and we're trying to change them and putting all our time and energy, and our stuff is undone. Our plate has not been fixed yet. The prophet told him, if you would have kept hitting the ground, you would have got the victory. You would have got what God said. You didn't get what God said, not because God didn't want it for you. You didn't get what God said, not because I didn't prophesy it to you. You didn't get what God said, not because it wasn't the will of the Lord. You didn't get what God said. We are not seeing what God is saying because we're not hitting the ground. Diligence. Diligent in our relationships. Diligent in our business, diligent to our schedule, diligent to our rest time. There is a time for rest, but not before your work is done. You need to rest up to focus on your work that you have to do. You should know what you have to do. Oh, no, I'm just, uh, 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 uh. Because when we, when we leave it out, remember, you need vision. Cast the vision. When you get the vision, the vision is going to cause you when you see it to run. It's going to cause those that are connected to you to run. Why is that so important? It keeps people who you love from running red lights in your life. So you should know what you're doing for the day. Because if you don't know, somebody will help you not know and not get something accomplished. Somebody will call you up with their 911, and you'll be like, child, I'm on my way. Drop all your stuff. See, you got to honor your own planner. You have to honor your own plans. 
You have to honor your own schedule. I can't come now. I, there's some calls you're going to see and you're going to say, this is going to take me out of getting done what I need to get done. They'll be okay. You are not obligated. Let them leave a message. Text, I cannot talk right now. Well, what you doing? I, I, don't, I can't explain to you what I'm doing. I might as well talk to you if I got to explain to you why I can't talk to you. I said I might as well talk to you if I have to take the time now to explain why I can't talk to you. It's still a distraction. You have to discern what is causing you to be fatigued, that you cannot focus and you cannot finish what God promised you. What you told God you wanted, what you put on your vision board, what you and God been working with for years, for months, for days, that thing has not come to pass because we are getting weary. And when we get weary, we owe ourselves a break. We owe ourselves a stop. I owe myself a vacation. I can't afford it right now, but I am going on vacation, baby. I owe myself this because I was diligent for that little bit of period of time. I ain't got what God said yet, but I hit the ground three times. I prayed three. I fasted three days. We love to count our little thing that we do and to project it on God to say, God, now show up like a genie. God says, you don't have it because you stopped hitting the ground. Selah. L let me show you something. Look at Daniel 7 and 25. Daniel 7 and 25. It's on the screen. Daniel 7 and 25 says this. You can read the whole chapter of 7 when you get time. It says, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And they think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until the time and times and the dividing of time. So, so here in 725, I want you to see this. It's, this is Daniel sharing the prophecy or the dream that he had. About, he's sharing it now. He's giving the interpretation of the dream that he had. And he's speaking now of the beasts and of the enemy, and of the end times and things that are happening. But I want to show you here a principle that's in this text. He says, and he shall, be, he, shall, he shall speak great words against the Most High. So you already know that's demonic right there if they're speaking against the Most High, right? That already tell you who we're dealing with. We're dealing with Satan. We're dealing with the kingdom of darkness. We're dealing with the imps. We're dealing with his strategies, his ways. He's going to speak great words, but it's going to be against God. He's speaking great words, tantalizing, sounds good. Ooh, he go, ooh that, oh, that man, ooh, that was motivational. I'm stirred up. Great words, but it's against the most high. First John says this way. It says, try every spirit to where you know if a spirit is of the Antichrist. And I said, because the spirit of the Antichrist is already here in the earth. There are already people declaring that Jesus has not come in the flesh. There are already people who are living their lives in a way that's denying the very Christ who died for us. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. You got to, it's in, hey, it's in the pulpits. See, the great deception is going to start in the pulpit. It ain't going to start out there in the streets. Nobody listen to the world. No, it's dealing with preachers who have not been processed. People who are going to be preaching his word and getting into deception and wanting to please people and wanting to be like Aaron and wanting to be like Coral and want to be great, want to be grand. They're going to now begin to pervert. They're going to begin to twist. They're going to begin to now scratch itching ears. They're going to begin to say things to build great buildings and build great ministries and get famous. And vanity is pulling them and money is their God and their God is their belly. They're going to be things that's pulling them now. That's why you got to be sound in your word. That's why Paul told me, hey, Timothy, you need to be sound in your word. You need to know the word of God. You need to be instant in season and out of season. You need to know the word when you hear the word. You need to be discerning of the word. You need to know what the spirit of God is on and what the spirit of God is not on. Don't be moved. That's why you can't be low. That's why your self-esteem got to be fixed. Why? Because if motivation pulls you, they got some motivation for you, baby. If inspiration pulls you, they got some inspiration to pick you up and to lift you up and leave you shouting and leave you praising and marching in and marching out. But you ain't got no deliverance because you don't know the word of God because the word of God has not gone on the inside of you instead of fire on the inside of you that that thing is able to sift you and separate your soul from your spirit that you're now following the spirit of God and your soul is leading you everywhere you want to go because you have not settled in your mind that you're going to live for God by the word of God by the spirit of God by the spirit of truth that you're not going to follow God to the letter of his word by his spirit 
You got to resolve that now. They're going to deceive you. They're going to have all the flashy stuff. It's already present. Some of y'all are following them. They come fight me with what they are. I don't care about what they say. <laughs> I'm not their pastor. <laughs> we got different missions. Ooh. Watch. Watch what he said in 725. Sorry about that, little priest. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. There it is. The strategy of Satan and his kingdom of darkness is to wear out the saints. To, <laughs> to get you so worn down that you can't do the work of God because you're weary. Because you're distracted. Because you're depleted. Uh, Wednesday ain't no, don't drag in here on no Wednesday. You get that worked out before you get here. This ain't pump and prime day. We got to break that. You know, this happened at work, and then my supervisor said, and, you know, the kids. and the, uh, Where's your joy? Where's the Holy Ghost? Do you let that move you? Now we're going to wear the band out. We're going to, the, the, the praise team, vocal cords, trying to get you into a place that you were supposed to already be in. You were supposed to encourage them today. I said you were supposed to encourage them today. You were supposed to encourage me today. God should have said something to you that confirmed what I'm saying to you now. We don't get to check out on Wednesday and be a corpse. Somebody preach me back to life. Bro, blow breath in me till I come back. No, I'm not resuscitating you. I had to pull down thoughts. I had crazy thoughts. I was going to say some stuff. I'm good. I'm back. I'm back. I'm good. I always went there. The strategy of Satan is to wear the saints out. So my question to you is why didn't you finish? Why didn't you follow up? <laughs> Why didn't you follow through? Why did you stop? Come on. Why didn't you keep working it? If it was God, you had the will of God. You had the word of God. You had the prophecy. You had the prophet actually helping you. I need you to get this. It, 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 it. Mm -hmm. The hardest part of being a pastor for me is to see somebody go through something that I know they don't have to go through. It's to see wisdom or an instruction or the path made clear or the, the, uh, the window of opportunity or grace being present and they not take advantage of it. And now they end up suffering or not getting the victory or lit plateauing out, being at this place where they're just existing in the faith or existing in church. And now people are prospering and people are proceeding and progressing in the things of God, but they list out because th there's only so much that the leader can do. I can only put my hands on your hands. I can't go to work for you. I can't sow for you. I can't serve for you. I'm not, don't make this about me. I'm just hear my heart. I, 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 I want you to get what God says, so I preach it to a way where it's clear that you heard what God said. So you can go do it. I don't leave room for ambiguity. If you're confused, it didn't come from me. And if it came from me, you need to clarify with me with a conversation about what I said. God wants you to do. Come on. This is not pumping prime. It should be in you. The same Holy Ghost that raised Jesus from the dead. The same Holy Ghost. Same one. Same one. Same one. Same one. Same one. He don't work. Holy Ghost is not just for worship. Holy Ghost is for living. 
Holy Ghost is power to do. Come on, he is the batteries that did not come in the pack when you got the product. He, he, he helps you get it done. Amen? So I need you to see that there in Daniel, that the, the mission of Satan is to wear out the saints, all right? Now go with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Is this making faith tonight? All right, so we're shaking off the willies and, and the, all anything that's stopping us, the, the cobwebs and spider webs. Come on, it's time for the saints to be diligent. God is looking for somebody here in the earth to represent him. Is it you? Who's going to be God's commercial? The world got theirs. Who's going to be God's commercial? 2 Thessalonians 3, start at verse 6. He says, now we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which you have received, which he received of us. For yourselves know how you ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you, neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we not, might not be chargeable to any of you, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Verse 10, for even when we were with you, this we command you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. There's a time to help. What's that? Ecclesiastes 3 said there's a time to refrain. Know the purpose. Everything has a purpose, a time, a season. You're supposed to do. You're supposed to help out. You're supposed to go support. But you got to know if the person has not put their hand to the plow, your hand is supposed to be on their hand, not in place of their hand. We have trained the church to put our hand on the bow, and we're not going to let them do. They don't get any muscle development. They don't get any practice, any PT, any physical training, any emotional training, any mental training, because we do it for them. That's your faith, not their faith. Wilt thou be made whole, Jesus said? Silver and gold have I none, but this what I have I give unto you. Pick, pick up your bed. He called blind Bartimaeus to him. Bartimaeus over there yelling. <laughs> Jesus stopped. Read the text. He said, and they brought him to Jesus. He had to get him uncomfortable. See, everybody been coming to Blind Bartimaeus and putting something in him and giving something for him and give him a little something, something, and give him a little food and bake him a little cake. Bring him to me. And then when he came, Jesus had the audacity. We don't read, we don't read, we really don't read how Jesus flowed. What do you want? <laughs> just because they're blind don't mean they want their sight. Just because they're in pain don't mean they want to get delivered. Just because they're in bondage doesn't mean they want to be free. You need to hear from their mouth what they want. Because without faith, they can't even please God. And we got people pleasing us who are not pleasing God. We don't allow the word to get in them and them to activate their faith by putting their hands to the bow, putting their hands to the arrow. No, you shoot it. No, you shoot it. You know, you aim it. No, you, you go to work. Call me tomorrow after you have this done. We got to allow people to get their faith. They got to have due diligence. We work with them. And we got to start rescuing people because we're training them to be immature in the Lord. We're training them to be babes forever. They're going to always be on milk. Even if that, if we don't train and develop and build them up in the Lord. The Bible says in Ephesians that the church was supposed to be growing up. How? Telling each other the truth in love. And we've gotten out of that because we just, we did, I think we ended out of the Greasy Grace era. Now we're into something new. I don't even know what we're into now. But we seek the kingdom. But the real believers seek the kingdom, amen? So watch this now. What did he say? If you don't work, if he's not diligent, if he won't get up, if he won't wake up, he shouldn't eat. Stop training people to be lazy in the spirit. Watch now, verse 11. For we hear that there are some among you which walk disorderly, working not at all, being, oh, there it is, being busybodies. All that, that doing what? Now that, that, that now then, 
them that are such, we command and exhort you by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness, hey, with quietness, they work and eat their own bread. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. You, you're supposed to be putting your hands to the plow and produce some. There's supposed to be something being produced from your sweat by your faith. We partner with people. Oh, I'm gonna get, it's right here. It's right here. Hold on. Let me get ahead of myself. Here we go. Verse 14. Oh, no. We're not at 14. We're at 13. Here we go. There it is. But you, say you. Brethren, that's the believers. That's the brothers and sisters in the Lord. When you see brethren, that ain't everybody. That ain't all God's creation. That's God's children. And you're not God's child until you've gone through the adoption process by the Spirit of God, through the blood of Jesus, and the repentance and redemption of your, of your soul from sin. Until you've gone through that, you're not God's child. Stop letting people tell you they're God's child and they don't serve the Lord. Stop letting people tell you they're God's child and they have not accepted Jesus. I'm giving you the, the word. Romans 8 says, by the spirit by which we cry, Abba, Father. It's the spirit. He says, if you don't have the spirit, he says, you are none of his. Okay? But you, be not weary in well-doing. This is where the saints fall off. We start doing well, and we don't see the results, and then we quit. We, we started serving, and then we didn't see the results, and then we quit. We weren't giving, and we started giving, but it didn't happen like we thought it was going to happen. And then we stop being well-doers. We start being well-wearyers. Verse 14, and if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man. They, they, here we go. And have no code, oh Lord. This is some of your, don't tell your Bible. And if any man obey not our word, don't know what he said. He didn't say God's word. Notice what the prophet said. He said, if he don't obey what we said, note him and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, we don't want him. You don't want him to feel bad. You don't want anybody. Could it be their repentance is waiting on them to be in a place? If the saints would just obey the word and stop trying to get ahead of the word and be the little Holy Ghost and follow the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost made it clear. He empowers you. I, I got this right here. It's right here. If they don't obey the word, know them, mark him, have no company with them, stop keeping company. Stop going to coffee places with people who don't obey the word. They were disobedient. They were dishonorable. They wouldn't follow the word of God, and you're not going to be a bridge for them to the rest of the body. Because you feel bad. How does the Lord feel? Note that man. It's in there. Note him. I identify him. And have no company with them. Well, you know, we're just supposed to love. Yeah, that love. See, love, oh my goodness. You haven't learned love yet. Love is a principle. Love is not a feeling. You just feel love. And anytime you feel that somebody don't feel love, you think it's your job to be this bridge of hope and then to go stretch yourself to them. No, 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 no. That is not your job. Jesus told the apostles, leave them alone. They be the blind leading the blind. Don't go over there. Don't say nothing to them. I'm working over there by not being over there. I'm doing something in them but not being present with them. We got to understand that because we were little rejects and little isolation modes, and we, I don't want nobody to feel. Stop projecting you onto other people. You need to get healed because when you heal, you stop projecting you onto other people. You stop counseling other people like they're you. That's deliverance. It's okay if you don't like it. I'm going to preach it anyway. Yet, there, here we go. Look at God's compassion. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. This is still, this is brother. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. Amen. Do you see that? So, so here's, here's my point. If a person's not being diligent in what God gave them to do, the Bible says there are going to be certain things they're not going to be able to partake in. It is not the church's job. Hey, oh, hey, hey, shut up. It's not the church's job to bury your family members. Not while we preach and get a life insurance policy. The devil is a liar. How you on a cruise and you ain't got no life insurance? You remember the pandemic? They wasn't even letting the boats dock. They just had them out there circling. 
You need some life insurance. There ain't no life insurance, but my point is there's order in the church. And we've allowed the church to become greasy. We've gotten things out of order. And then people are not, they're never going to do because you do for them. (sighs) Freedom, maturity, development, built up in the Lord. Could could it be they're not hearing from God because you're interfering? Could you be the noise in their ear while they cannot hear the voice of God? Could it be your hand in the way while they won't obey God? They won't put their hand to the plow. They won't put their hand to the bow because you got it. You won't even let them believe. Selah. Okay, let me let me get ready to let y'all go so y'all don't fight me. I want I want y'all to come back Sunday. Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, the Amplifier says at the appropriate time in the appropriate season, we shall reap if we faint not. Hold on now. If we're not weary, (laughs) don't be weary in well-doing. Don't get, we, matter of fact, when you're not doing well, you don't even get weary doing world stuff. You notice the juice you get in your house, you don't get, no, you don't even get no sleep. But when we start doing well, when it requires us to be disciplined, when it requires us to be orderly, that's what we just read. They say people are busybodies. They're out being disorderly. They're doing everything under the sun they want to do, and God ain't in none of it. Some of these causes that some of y'all backing and starting up, you better make sure your cause is centered in Christ and centered in his kingdom, not out of your rejection, not out of what you didn't get as a child, not out of who wasn't there, not out of what you see going on on the news. You better make sure your cause is centered in Christ. You better make sure what you go walk for is walking in the spirit with God. Hello? And you might be, oh, Lord, there might be some walks at your work that you might not participate. I ain't saying you can't participate in them. You better be led of the Lord. Don't you let them dupe you in with this unity and diversity and equality and equality and equity. Y'all better know what them terms mean. They mean different things for different people. And let us, and let us, and let us, not be weary in well-doing. So whatever God told you to do, your faith is, Luke 18 says, when I return, will I find faith in the earth like it was for the woman who kept coming continually to the unjust judge? Can I find that in you? Will you continue to see your faith and consistency and persisting is, is you doing exactly what God told you last? See, oftentimes we want a new word from God, but we stop doing the thing he told us to do. I, you know, I want something new. This, 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 this thing, ain't, you know, it's not as glamorous as it used to be. It's kind of falling off and drying up. No, it's for you to be consistent. Picture the woman who had to wait for Jesus to come into the earth who was in that temple praying, the widow. Picture the man who, who God told you will not die until you see the Lord. He had to be faithful and consistent in his position waiting on the Lord. Will you wait? That's how you wait on the Lord. Will you wait on the Lord doing what he told you to do last? I'm telling you your answers are going to show up as you're consistent. I'm telling you he's going to send the ram to the place he told you to go. He's going to send your answers to the place that you're supposed to be the solution in. We're asking God to do this miraculous wonderful thing and could it be that God sent your answer to the place you were supposed to be? To the job you were supposed to be at? to the church you were supposed to be at, to the people who were supposed to pastor you, partner with you, to the job, come, to the city you were supposed to be. And could it be that we can get anxious? That's why the enemy provokes and he gets us weary and we gets us fatigued and we can't focus and we start doing things out of order. We start getting disorderly and we start becoming busybodies and it looks like kingdom and it looks like God is moving and it looks like God is working and it looks like we're walking in faith and it looks like we're being patient, but we're just projecting. It's the simple things. You should have hit the ground 
five or six times. <laughs> you should have hit the ground more than you hit the ground. You should have still been speaking God's word over that situation. You should have still been still. You should have still been waiting. You should have waited five or six more days. You should have fasted a few more days. You know what? You should have declared a little bit more. You know what? You should have sold a little bit more than what you sold. Could it be that God is demanding something of us and he's not telling us A, B, C, D? He's waiting on the maturity of the Holy Ghost that you said you fill with fire and you fill with the Holy Ghost. And now the Holy Ghost should be speaking to you and giving you strength in the time of weakness and giving you peace in the time of turmoil and giving you energy when you feel fatigued that you can finish what he said for you to do. Your victory is in you keep hitting the ground and you keep hitting the ground. Do you have the victory yet? Not just for a little while. We get little victory. We get little three-year victory and little two-day victory and little two-week victory and little six-month victory. I don't want no temporary victory. I want total peace. I want total victory. I want total joy. I don't want my joy going and coming. I don't want happiness going and coming. I want my rest to stay. I want my sleep to be sweet every night, not some nights. Not when little Johnny get in trouble. Not when my brother, sister, not when mama got a problem. Hey, I'm not available for that. Go see God. Go see God like God go see God. Sounds like you need the Lord. We have to be diligent. We have to be diligent. We will not be deceived. We will not be, and here's the challenge, here's the challenge. Proverbs says, um, Proverbs 22 says, the rich and the poor meet together, and the Lord is the maker of them all. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 says, be not deceived, evil, corru evil communication corrupts good manners. Here's the problem. We, we, we rest in areas where our faith is not in agreement with those that we're around. And it doesn't mean you don't minister to people. I have people who are not necessarily walking with the Lord, who I consider a friend, but, but it only goes so far. I don't put, I don't, I don't lay my head with them. I don't pour out my heart to them because I know they're not following or filled with the Holy Ghost so they can't handle. So you take carnal friends and give them spiritual information. You take carnal relationships. You take relationships of old and give them new revelation of what God has given you. You take things that should have been in your past that you're now ministering to as the Lord leads you. You're not trying to bring that thing into your future because you don't want them to think that you think you're something new and you're brand new this and that. No, I'm telling you now, God has set a place now for you to be diligent even with your brother. That's why the, the Bible says your brethren. You're supposed to now be in brethren, be in brother mode the way the people who think like you not that they are the same mind per se, but they think like you in the things of God and the Holy Spirit is in them. And now they encourage you in the things you're supposed to be doing for God. They strengthen you in the things you're supposed to be doing for God. They give a grace that's on their life is for you. That's why he says, no man is left, father, mother, this, this, and that, and shall not receive more in this lifetime. Fathers, mothers, this. I, I'm going to give you new family. I'm going to give you new relationship to where they do understand what you're saying. And when you share your heart, you don't sound crazy. And they're not going to judge you and persecute you. I've given you a place of safety that the thing you don't know because you want to share with somebody but the people you're sharing it with are not spirit filled and I'm telling you right now that evil communication is going to corrupt the good manners the good place the good destination where God is trying to take you to that's why you got to be in a place in an atmosphere of faith that God can get you built up and God can get you encouraged and they can speak, even though you don't feel like it and even though you feel fatigued they speak faith into you they speak focus into you they speak you're going to finish this thing no you're not no come on I'll help you here hold your hand up come on I'm going to stand behind you Come here, David. Come here. I'm not going to let you quit. Hold your hands up. So as you as he gets weak, I got him. I got him. They held up Moses' hands. I got him. As he wants to fall, oh, whoa, we can't, we can't rest here, baby. This ain't safe. We can't lay down here spiritually. There's some bugs around. Here's some, here's some viruses and some infections. We can't hang out here. I hold him up. But I can't do it until he puts his hand to the plow, till he puts his hand to the arrow. It's his assignment. It's his victory. I can't steal the victory from him by doing it for him. I don't go before him like that. I support him as he obeys the Lord. I give him the word of the Lord, and now he has to obey. We have to obey. And now when you put your hand to it, God will come behind and strengthen your hand. God will come behind and 
and strengthen your stand. God will come behind and get you standing up where you thought you were weak. He will stand you up. Well, hey, you're not weak anymore. I'm fortifying you in your walk. Hey, don't worry about who left you. Don't worry about who's not here. Don't put your trust in them. I've been trying to wean you out of them for the last five years anyway. The problem is you hooked on them, and I've been speaking to you about them, but you have yet to obey. So I caused them to reject you. I caused them to abandon you because I want you to be diligent. I've given you a new family. I've given you a new focus. I've given you new friends, but you have not walked into them yet. But I want to strengthen you, says the Lord. I will, as you touch it, but you got to pick it up first. You got to put your hand to it first. And I'm going to put my hand on your hand. I'm going to put my I'm going to put my hand on your shoulder. I'm going to stand you up in the spirit, but you got to obey God first. You got to obey God first. So we break the deception that God's going to do it for us. No, God's going to do it with me. God's going to do it, hey, through me. God's going to do it on top of what I'm doing. I'm going to put my hand to what God said, to what he gave me, and now he's backing me. Now the spirit of God is endorsing me, and he won't let me go back. Hey, he won't let me go back. He pushed me forward because I put my hand to it. He can't go back. He's dealing with your enemies. Everything chasing you. He's dealing with it. It can't get to you. The Holy Spirit got your back. He got your rear, what the Bible says. It shall not come near you. And I got you. I'm standing you up. But you got to be diligent. You got to have your heart set and say, God, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to do what you said, God. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Put your hand to it. Put your hand to it. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. He's sending your help. He's sending your help. He's sending your help. Somebody's going to grab your hand. Somebody's going to grab your elbow. Somebody's going to stand their feet where your feet stand. Somebody's going to fortify you in the ground where you need to stand. But you got to trust the Lord. You got to trust the Lord. You receive this word tonight. Come on. We're going to be diligent. We're going to be diligent. We're going to be diligent. I'm going to keep hitting. I'm going to keep hitting. Why'd you stop? That's what you did. I empowered you now. You see somebody they don't have, you ask them, why did you stop? Why did you stop hitting the ground? Why did you stop praying? Why did you stop confessing? Where's your confession at? Well, you know, it takes so long and it's been so, I don't care. Hey, I'm still believing God for the building. I'm still looking for God for the building. I ain't moved by what the market is doing. I didn't call me to this. God called me to this. I ain't moved by what the market is doing. I'm steadfast. I'm faithful in what God, and I'm still being a steward. We ain't going blowing the bag. No, no, no. We're going to be faithful. So when that window opens up, we can walk right in that thing. We can ice skate right on in that thing without an issue. Because God called us to this. And he's going to strengthen our hands. He's going to strengthen our hands. The Bible says he strengthened the hands of Nehemiah and the men. He strengthened their hands that they were able to war and they were able to build. They were able to work and they were able to build. And they were able to protect and they were able to prevent because God was with them. He's going to strengthen your hands. You are not by yourself. That's a lie. You are not by yourself. You are not doing this alone. God is with you. And he's giving you brethren. And he's giving you families. Hey, that are going to support you. They're going to admonish you as a brother. Even when you fall. Even when you weep. The Bible says we're going to restore such a one with the spirit of weakness. Spirit of meekness right now. You're going to be restored. But you got to be in the brethren. You got to be in the fold. You can't be running around all going wild. Christians going wild and expecting everything to fall in place. No. You got to be in position. You got to be in the sheepfold. You got to be found in the house of God. You got to be found in the gate of the Lord. Into my courts, into my gates. You got to be found in the gates. So even when you're weak, somebody's there to uphold you. You're not by yourself. We're going to do what God said do. I said we're going to do. I pull down every area of deception, of self-deception that the enemy will send something to you to get you weary in your mind, to get you weary spiritually, to get you weary emotionally. You just want to quit. You just want to fold. You're not doing this by yourself. He says, let the weak say I'm strong. He says, let the poor say I'm rich. That ain't confusion. That's trusting in the Lord. We trust in you, God. We trust in you, God. God's going to do it with you. He's going to do it in you. He's going to do it through you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God praise.
We're going to be diligent as believers. Amen. Ooh, go with God as he goes with you. We love you. We'll see you on Sunday. God bless you.